Hey guys, Smitty here. Thanks for tuning in and welcome back. Today we are back in Valheim and I have a very special build to share with you all. The Castle Siege. This project was quite the undertaking, but I'm really excited to finally share it with you all. A ton of creativity went into this build and I think it's going to provide a lot of inspiration for you builders out there. Today I'll be taking on a full tour of the project, but without further ado, grab a snack, grab a drink, let's get right into it. All right, so the Castle Siege, this is an idea that I've actually had in my head for quite some time and I, I knew Valheim had the tools to create a pretty epic scene. I just never really pulled the trigger on it because I think I knew my vision was pretty ambitious and it was gonna be a pretty large undertaking to, to do it or at least do it in the way that I felt like it needed to be done to, to capture my vision. But thankfully I, I found the time and energy to complete it and fully realize this vision and I gotta say, I love this build. For those of you who are familiar with the channel, you definitely know that we are fans of story-based building. And what I mean by that is, when a build has elements in it that really enhance the, the story of the build or really make it feel like it's grounded in the world that we are creating. And this build is absolutely full of those elements. Okay, so first, just to give kind of like a bird's eye view of the total build, it is pretty large in scale, and that's because I really wanted to capture the entire scene of this siege and really make this feel like a comprehensive world that it took place in. So that involved actually building the castle, the town itself, also where the, the siege was commencing, or at least suggestion of it with some of the siege machines. So I'll go through and walk, we'll take a closer look at all the different elements here, but again, quite a large scale build. Uh, but I think it paid off because we really were able to tell the story quite well, in my opinion. So just starting here on the bottom, I guess we should circle back to some of these homes to begin with. And so with this village, I really wanted to make it feel like it was truly just destroyed. 
like whatever army rolled through here really did just pillage and destroy everything in their path so it feels very loose a lot of the materials are just scattered on the ground to really give the, the suggestion these homes were just destroyed also you'll see the fields so i did this thing with the fields where again to kind of give the the feel that these fields were pillaged and kind of burned i paired these bonfire pits with the the cultivated land to kind of make it look like the fields were burned so the cultivated land is a little bit darker than just the pathened land and i thought in my head that kind of looks like kind of like the the the, the land had been burnt or converted into ash right so using those in in conjunction with each other i think it does give this this feeling that the army did come through and raid it and, and maybe set the fields on fire and maybe that's part of the siege strategy right trying to starve them out of the castle so this is actually a broken catapult we'll see other versions up here that are rolling down a path but again just nice storytelling elements that kind of add to the sense that a siege really took place here as we work our way up to the village we see more destroyed catapults and then again a lot of houses that are just in ruin so i did also include some fires here to make it feel like maybe the the, the wreckage is still ablaze maybe this was like the the day after of the siege so there's still there still are some flames that have yet to to go out but Again, really wanted to make this feel loose, make it feel random, like maybe some of the, the catapults, which we'll go visit here in a second, really destroyed some of these homes. We go up here, so this is actually a battering ram. So I think this is actually a pretty, pretty cool design. I think it works really well. I think the, the suggestion of a battering ram is pretty clear here. In this case, the story for this one is that it looks like one of the wheels uh, seemed to have broke, so it got stuck in the mud here. So it could not make the the journey up to the gatehouse, which is over that direction. I think what I'm gonna do here next is actually just run over, just take a look at some of these different siege machines. So this is an actual, a catapult that isn't destroyed. So it looks like it, it is just launched. Maybe done some of the destruction on the walls here. Again, I just did some experimenting with some different siege des designs and I wanted a smaller mobile looking catapult and I think that works pretty well and just some more houses that are ruins maybe this one burnt down the half of it more just broken down homes and then this is a catapult that looks like it this one also lost a wheel so it was unable to launch its rocks so really I actually really love this little story here like when you implement things how like oh it lost its wheel it, it couldn't proceed with the invasion just stuff like that i feel like is really charming and is what i mean by like storytelling elements and when you incorporate just little subtle things like that i think it just makes a build so much better or just makes it feel so much more authentic to whatever story you're trying to tell so over here we have where this the siege was kind of being commenced being launched on or launched from uh, with some trebuchets this is a house that was maybe completely burnt down or at least that was the, the suggestion I was, I was trying to make here we go up and just take a closer look so as you can see I came up with a couple of uh, trebuchet designs as well as some maybe heavy ballistas that were firing upon the the castle and destroying it so I, I really love these trebuchet designs. I think they just look really believable and feel like they were kind of created with an engineering mindset. I'm, I'm no engineer and obviously this may not be totally accurate, but again, I feel like they, they do look believable and like they maybe are firing stones and just a really nice decorative, again, storytelling element to, to this siege. And the nice thing about these trebuchets is that Again, this is all standard vanilla pieces, didn't use any mods, but using the different angled beams, you can actually position these trebuchets at different positions of the firing sequence, which was, uh, I don't know, just a nice way to switch it up and again, make it feel a little bit more organic. 
But yeah, definitely wanted to make these feel like they were firing upon the keep over there. And I really like these ballista designs too, like these heavy ballistas. Try to make it feel like they were shooting these really significant bolts. Then I just placed a couple of swords at the tip just to make it feel like an actual bolt. I did experiment with some spears and it just didn't look quite right because they were just too thin and I think the swords actually just look better. So I definitely wanted to give the suggestion of, of these bolts and you'll see as I take a closer look at some of the walls of the t at the tower and the, of the castle that I have some of these actually sticking out of it to kind of give the suggestion that maybe these got lodged into the walls. But really love these siege machines. They might be some of my favorite parts of this build to be honest just because I think they're really creative and original. And I'll probably do maybe a tutorial on some of these different uh, siege machine designs um, because I, f I feel like there'd be a nice decorative piece that you guys can maybe implement into your own builds as well. So let's just run on back through here, through the town. Again, uh, definitely want to switch up some of the ground material and using the, the, the cultivated land to make it seem like this land was really burnt or maybe damaged from catapults or anything like that. Just give it a little bit more texture to the land and, and make it feel a little bit more organic. Here are some of the ballista bolts that I was talking about from the heavy ballista. So maybe these actually bounced off the wall and were broken. And as you can see, I actually have some bolts that are stuck in the wall as well. So maybe make it look like maybe it's pushing in some of the blocks here. We got some stuck in the tower. And then we got some stuck here as well. So this is actually a pretty significant breach of the wall, so maybe the trebuchet has got to this one. And I love the way this wall looks. Just from like an organic standpoint, like it, it really looks like this wall was breached and was destroyed. And this that's the thing about this build, is that randomness is kind of like an art form in trying to create this story, right? Like how, how do you make these walls look random and broken in an authentic way that really makes it look like they were sieged? And so that took a little bit of work, but I think it looks really nice. And you'll see that it follows even throughout this this castle where I tried really hard to try to make it look really random and, and broken. And, and I feel like the suggestion really worked. Like it really does feel quite, quite ruined, to be honest. So we'll take a closer look at the, the castle in a second, but we'll just continue to wrap up here. So again, we just have a couple other homes up over here destroyed and then maybe some rubble on the on the healer here so maybe this was like a windmill or something that was was burnt down and then a couple other just houses that have been destroyed over here you know it's kind of an interesting interesting thing because it's like i would design and create these houses and then just and then the next layer is trying to figure out how do i make them look destroyed so i might have to like break them down and Kind of messy them up, I guess, is, is the way to put it. But definitely a fun exercise and kind of an original thought. As we work our way over here, so this is the actual gatehouse. And I, and I love this section of the build. Because what I try to suggest here is that so it looks like one of the battering rams actually made it to the gatehouse. And then actually breached the gate as well. And so I think this is just another really strong element of storytelling. It really feels like this ram just smashed through this gate and maybe like a struggle ensued here with some of the different weapons and shields that are kind of placed on the ground so really love this section of the build just really feels like it tells a strong story you look at the top of the gatehouse yeah it looks like maybe there was a garrison up here of some kind maybe some pots with some oil that they would pour down this 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 hatch if there's a battle down there and then again it looks quite destroyed and messy and and loose with some of the stones but really like it we just continue through here on the walls again wanted to make again it feel really loose like it was taking quite a punishing from the siege machines and then just use a lot of different items like swords shields bows to make it look like there maybe was a garrison up here that was defeated and then all these towers we can still go in them still get to the top but as we can see, they are partly destroyed. So again, that was also the interesting thing. So same with the houses, like with the castles and stuff, 
my process is really to kind of create the castle, create the walls, create the build, and then destroy them. But I still wanted to create them in a way that felt believable, that you could still go in it, still felt like it was a functional castle. And I think it worked, and I think that way of going about it really made it feel more authentic, which I like. So if we go down here, this is some of the the structures in the castle. Again, made to feel like they were really just been destroyed. Some fires still raging on the inside. It makes it look like there's a lot of rubble and wreckage, so... This was, may was maybe a tavern at some point that was destroyed. So maybe like a bar that used to be there, but again, it is in ruins, so... Lox's tail in the inn, so... No more. They were destroyed in the siege, but... Really love how these buildings are made to feel very destroyed as well. So maybe some of the trebuchets actually reached in and, and destroyed these buildings. We work our way to this side. This was meant to be maybe like a market area. So maybe the the traders would come in and, and sell their goods in this side of the castle. And as we push on, this is where we actually get to the keep. So the keep is supposed to be kind of like the strongest and most fortified structure where maybe the uh, king and queen would live. But then I also laid out a bunch of weapons and shields and such to make it feel like there was really a struggle here to protect the keep. So maybe this is where one of the final stands happened. I do like the keep design. So this is actually a little balcony that maybe the ruler would give the speeches. As you'll see, there will be a little bedroom on the top, but it feels quite significant. I also designed a stairway that wraps around the outside, but definitely feels like the biggest structure of the castle itself, which fits. Over here, this would be kind of like a side kitchen that connects over to the main keep through that door. So if we just go on up through the keep. As you can see, maybe it was just a bit of a feast hall. No longer is it very grand. Looks like maybe some catapults got through the window here. And then we also have some weapons to suggest that maybe this was actually the final stand protecting the keep during the siege. But this is the throne room where the, the rulers would sit. I actually really like this room. I really like how I broke up the roof to make it feel like some of the projectiles actually got through here. But it actually make, looks really nice with, with the sun that pokes through as well. And again. I just think it really fits with our, our story here of a siege and it works out really well. This also connects to the, the surrounding walls on each side. So the entire castle is connected as I think would make sense for a castle. And then again, this stairway actually loops up and around to the back and up to the top. So maybe this is actually where the, the rulers would stay in their, in their room at the top of the keep. And then down here, it's really just made out to be more of a defensive structure. Some stones, they are being thrown down. And then, again, just some weapons and things like that, so... From a purely, like, design standpoint, I think the castle is actually quite interesting. It's kind of too bad in a way that we had to destroy it in a way to kind of do the story that we are trying to do, but... Yeah, just purely from a design standpoint, I, I really like how the castle is laid out. I think it's really interesting with some of the buildings and the market and then the surrounding village on the outside. I think that that, that makes sense for maybe like a fortress or a castle with the surrounding like, people who lived there. We did cover briefly, but again, I, I this this tower just looks so good in my opinion. Like the way I've made it to kind of make it look like it crumbled here on the side. Then also that's also reflected on the ground and some of the materials that have fallen down and that respect to physics in a build in your, your suggestion of like story definitely helps to kind of convey that so really like this this round tower i think it is the well maybe that's the tallest point but it's one of the tallest points in the build and it's built on top of this rock which really makes it feel like a strong structure well maybe not so strong anymore since it's destroyed but Makes sense as a defensive structure when they were building the castle. And as we continue here, we just have more of the wall with 
you know, like an abandoned garrison, but... But again, really like this build. If we go in here, this is just more of maybe what would have been the tavern. Just kind of decorated with, with more wreckage. So I think that pretty much rounds up the build. So as you can see, we got one more tower over here. Really like this build. This build is actually really special to me. I think it just turned out so well. And, and like I mentioned before, we're definitely fans of story-based building on this channel. And this build really probably has some of the strongest storytelling that I've, that I've done so far. And I'm just really happy with how it turned out. Again, had this idea in my mind for a while and just have kind of been pushing it off because I knew it would be ambitious and it definitely took a while, but really, really pleased with the end results and it just, it just feels super authentic and I think it just, I don't know if I have another build that feels as just based in the world as this one, so really happy with that. But there you guys have it. Hopefully you're able to pull some inspiration to this massive siege scene. I know it's probably not the most functional thing for you guys who are like survival builders or something out there, but for you builders who kind of just build for purely for the art form, you know, this is definitely a, a fun project to try. I would definitely recommend doing kind of like a ruins or some kind of a siege scene. I think it's just a really fun exercise and, and quite an original idea and forces you to, to come up with some cool storytelling element. But hopefully you guys got some inspiration. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe. I will catch you in the next one. Thanks.